time is 4.30, and we will call the meeting to order. Um, Marty, since we are missing our sergeants at arms, can we impose on you to lead the Pledge of Allegiance? Who's Marty? Marty. Yeah. I'm, I'm Marty. Yes. Is there another Marty? No. I think you're the only one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Didn't expect that one. There's a flag back there. Right? Well, we got a flag over here, so we've got two of them. Take a pick. Take a pick. I'll pick this one. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.
two things. One is we were going to have sign up sheets uh, for the various candidates that Alan just mentioned for assembly, Malka among them. But uh, after talking to them, they told me that they really don't need help in the way of like volunteer work, like um, you know, making phone calls, going door to door, that kind of thing. What they really want is money. <laughs> so if anybody wants to donate to their campaign, small amounts, I'm sure, are welcome. Anything you're interested in. If you want to help their campaign, most of them are here. Gwen, Daniel, Malka, uh, and Ramona's supposed to come. She said she was coming today, so hopefully she'll come later. Then talk to them and see if, uh, you know, if you've worked on something where you'd, you'd be interested to help them. And the only issue, uh, and please, you know, please do that, because running for office is a really, uh, these people are really putting themselves on the line. There's a lot of guts to run in, uh, for uh, office anywhere, especially as a Republican in New York City, you know, so uh, they deserve our respect, if nothing else, just for that. And then, yeah, yeah. and the other thing I wanted to say was uh, the issue of membership cards has come up. We used to issue membership cards to people when they joined the King's meetings. I spoke to Alan, and he says that the reason we don't have any now is because you can get new ones that will say 2017 on them, so they'll give them that at the December meeting. Okay, right, Alan? Correct. So if you want a membership card, please make sure you come to the December meeting and get one then, okay? All right, so that's all I wanted to say. Please support our candidates financially or otherwise, and um, let's keep Brooklyn Tea Party active, you know, and helping to make a difference in the city and the state. Okay, thank you. Before we, um, what was it, um, start with our speakers, I would like to, I had already made a donation to Mr. Ramos. I would also like to make a donation at this time to our president, Glenn Nocera. Thank you so much. And uh, this will be going to good use. Hopefully get that message out there and hopefully open some eyes and ears and uh, know that we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So yeah, hopefully right. we could uh, get that message that we want fiscal responsibility back in our government and uh, not to have this Bill de Blasio character running our government much longer. Right. How many so, zeros are in that chat? With that being said, we have a presidential election obviously also <laughs> coming up. If anyone would like some yard signs, there's a couple right there. I have some more. We run out. Uh, please feel free to put them and, and electrify them. <laughs> because the other day someone came in my garden and uh, ripped it out of my garden and uh, threw the metal spike into the middle of the street and ripped it to shreds. So it's very uh, uh, nice of our local liberals of the neighborhood. Because when I posted it up on my uh, local Kensington Facebook page that I run for the neighborhood, uh, a couple of people defended, wow, oh, God, that's horrible. But there was a lot that came out and said, oh, I'm glad that happened. <laughs> and a lot that said, oh, if I saw a sign of Nazi symbol, I would do that too. So that's the mindset of our uh, tolerant liberal class that we have, especially these, uh, uh, what do they call them, the ones that are moving into all these neighborhoods now? Uh, gentrification types, uh, millennials, or whatever. Yep. Hipsters, yep. hipsters, that's the word I'm The hipsters. So they are so tolerant, aren't they, as they drive off in their smart cars, because they're not so smart, are they? <laughs> so they like to if you look around on McDonald Avenue and tell your road, there's a uh, mural that says, don't tread on me with a snake, with the American flag mural. And on across that mural, I found out about it, and I took a picture of it, and I, again, posted up on my uh, local page. And they wrote Kepernick, or Colin Kepernick, across the American flag and destroyed it. I know exactly what type of mindset did that. That is, again, how a little local liberals that like to come around and say they love everyone and love everyone's opinion. No, they don't. If they don't agree with you, they will be very disgusting. That's what Hillary Clinton's going. You see all this today and, and, and it's really, you have to put a stand. You have to say enough is enough. And stand up. That's why I said, that's okay. I have 25 more signs to replace that with. So you just keep on putting up. I have bumper stickers. Everyone wants a bumper sticker for their car. Please let me know. Boy, look, if you run into uh, boy, yeah, boy. Uh, and as long as you brought up our little friend in the 49ers, I'm glad to tell you, folk, they lost 45 to 16. Yeah. Oh. He was a starter today. Oh. He was a starter. Oh. Yes, oh. 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 Oh.
will be on Carmel. the unemployment <laughs> line so, soon enough. Yeah. That's, well, that's great news. Thank you for that update. <laughs> so, uh, so with that being said, we have to put a stand to this and say, look, enough is enough. We will not, I uh, know you're doing a lot of Trump rallies, too. Uh, you were part of Yeah, right. So, with a good success, I hope, for, uh, Well, it, it is what it is, but look, at the end of the day, that's because most of us work and have families and, you know, very, very, yes, that's good. Absolutely. We got that voice out there, and that's very good that that happened. And look, I, I was there, and Donald Trump came down. Oh, Donald Trump came down. Really? Oh, that was beautiful. He didn't get to talk to us because security wouldn't let him to the crowd, but he was right in front of us. Oh, that's nice. Where was it? Where was it? In front of Trump Tower. Oh, good. So with that, with that, with that being said, and I can see one of our liberals are flying around. But it was really powerful. With that being said, uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest speaker today, uh, Darren Aquino, who is running for the New York City Mayor and hopefully be our next mayor. Darren, please come up. And Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here today. Came in a quick, I had, a, I had to do a community play. I'm very community active. For those of you that don't know anything about me, I head an organization called that it's for the city of Americans, veterans, police, firemen, and family. The reason it has such a long name is when I started it, when Reagan inspired me, I was a Reagan member, one of the famous Reagan members, one of the people it started me off to become a Republican and to find out what a Republican was, a real Republican. And I wasn't a, I came out of a Democratic family. I grew up in East Harlem. I was born in the Bronx and lived throughout the boroughs. And I learned that Lincoln, the founding felt of the Republican Party, is what we got away from. You know, when I was younger and not interested in politics until Reagan, started getting more involved and then founded the organization. And what you learn when you head a nonprofit that services community, and then it gets extended because there was other names. I started advocates for disabled Americans until police officers, relatives of mine, and firefighters said, we're having difficulty getting our benefits. So I nonprofitized the name in 1999, and it went national. And for two presidents, after Reagan, we had their respect and support. Uh, Clinton was very good at sending very nice personal letters. Yes, I support you, say, oh, we're going to enforce the ADA. Never got any support. So when Hillary says that she supports the disabled, I can tell you firsthand, she did not. But the Bushes, when I had difficulty with a firefighter <coughs> or a case I was handling that was in federal process, like Social Security, They'd get a letter from the White House, and they had 21 days to answer the president why there was a delay. The difference between a true Republican and some of the ones we've seen our party go up and down, and we've seen people cross the lines in a negative way. Because at the end of the day, we all have to understand that we're American. But Americans with integrity and honor is more important. It's, it's what makes us grow and, and strive. Lincoln vision for America was just that, to bring us all together, united. As we speak and we see our new candidates, a lot of new faces, first timers, people coming out, exercising democracy. That's what we were supposed to do. Our forefathers laid that out, telling us specifically about these days, when a long train of abuses, it's like the first three of the declaration, whenever there's a long train of abuses, that convinces a design that barely comes against the very same object, our freedom, our liberty, right? Those things. Convinces a design that comes against that object. It is our duty and our right to change the guard for the future security of the nation. Amen. Now, if we look at that and we take that in the content of what it means. Now, you see, Americans, they go to, to the war and they go and they gotta take it off. And uh, an elected official, takes that same one. We swear on that Constitution. But here's the deal. As an American, it's your responsibility already. So that's what that, that, that thought is telling you. That you don't have to reaffirm your oath. 
You have to enforce that oath for those that you elect. And we didn't do that. That's why we're in the shape that we're in. That's why our children are being bullied in schools. Charter schools are working and not working all over because we're not investing in what's working. So we're gonna invest in what works. You see, being a grassroots guy and whose mother died from Obama don't care, okay? <laughs> She was, she, she was ill, she got better, she was, I grew up, I'm not ashamed of my life, she was an alcoholic in the early days, and then after Sandy, you know, she got older, she would drink on weekends, and the good thing about coming out and being us and being genuine American, there's no shame in telling the truth, and back when I grew up, some of these things were common, because that was the lifestyle, like, there was no foul, no harm to the children, you know, you didn't feel poor when you were poor. You know, I grew up in a poor average family. So, but you weren't poor because you had the neighbor, or everything you had in common with the neighbor. You grew up in a neighborhood where, but early, I grew up, I was Puerto Rican and Italian. And I looked more Latino than Italian. And what you don't, what you don't see now is after 17 surgeries, I had a up and a club foot. So imagine a little kid with a big shoe. Imagine how much challenges I faced. But today, by the grace of God, good surgeon, here I am. So to all of those struggles and fighting all of these components, I always, you know, my father would say, Democrats are for the poor. Really? I said, how come? When I asked for help from Clinton, I got a nice letter, but no phone call or no fax to the, to the Office of Social Security. The Commander-in-Chief is the head of every federal agency because we elected him. How come? Well, you know, Clinton's a good guy. For who? Yeah. Who's he a good guy for? And I love my dad. My dad's now got Parkinson's. And my mother got sick after she got well, like I was saying. She developed uh, coronary issues because she always ate well, but she ate rich food. She was, at the time of her death, she was 80 years old. But she had legs still. She was in great shape because she always ate well. Drank a lot, but she ate well. And she took care of herself in other ways. She quit smoking at a very young age took care of herself. But when it got to that point that the effects of rich foods and things, her, her heart got full, congested up, and she was getting SSI and Medicare. And then they make you change and make those supplements that Obama don't care. It takes over and then they want you to pay. And you have this much money, you don't get it. And it was a plan that was totally failing. And we all knew it. But his promise to fix and strengthen and make great this country, even if it takes 10 years, it might not happen. Nobody heard that. They elected him twice, and it's not gonna start for 10 years. Why would you put a guy that can't make a change in the first year, that you could see something tangible in a direction? So when you get back to your city, and you get back to your state, and you wonder what's going on, it's a group of criminals, a criminal empire in the Democratic Party. And that's not good for real, humble Democrats, because we're all American. We have the voice of democracy that gives us the opportunity to say, I, I don't like your right. This one is better. And it only just went that far. But now, it's a critical empire. Your rights have to compromise. My mother didn't get the home care nurse that the doctor ordered one month prior that caused her to go septic. She was dead in two days. Then she went in, they did, well, the nurse never showed up. The doctor directed, and you know, when you puff up, you see the condition, she's 80. You know, healthy, but the heart has a lot of function, so then the lungs fill up with water. You get pulmonary issues, and you know, my sisters and I weren't in agreement with that. And they decided to pull the plug, I disagree. But you see, if democracy worked there, my three sisters to outrule me and make a decision I wouldn't have made. You know, because I, I have faith. Grew up Catholic, altar boy. I did all those good things with all of my challenges. And always with me. And I can persevere. And I can achieve. Because why? I had opportunity. And opportunity presents possibility. What do you have now? You don't have opportunity. So guess what? There's no possibility. Well, our Constitution has been destroyed by the very people, both Republican and Democrat, we put in office. And let me tell you, some of the Republicans were bad boys too. 
capitalizing and making us look bad, making New York, which should be a Republican state and not a Democratic state, because of the criminal activity. So now we got an opportunity where I've seen a lot of guys, ex-Marines. I come from a 